So today we're going to cover startup tasks for cloud services. And what a startup task is, essentially it's something that starts before your actual deployment is complete. So as the VM is coming up online, as cloud service is coming up online, you can have a, a series of events happen, such as, you know, as I often say, installing some software, which is the most common case that I've used it for. But it could be other tasks as well, creating any number of files, doing any number of things. So let's go to Microsoft's own documentation, and they start off right off the bat explaining what it is. You can use startup tasks to perform operations before a role starts. Operations that you might want to perform, including installing a component, registering com components, setting registry keys, or starting a long process. They do give us a note that startup tasks are not applicable to virtual machines, only to cloud service web and worker roles, which is fine. That's exactly what we're working with. So let's continue how startup tasks work. Startup tasks are actions that are taken before your roles begin and are defined inside the service definition, that CSDEF file, by using task element within the startup element. Frequently, startup tasks are batch files, but they can also be console applications or batch files that start PowerShell scripts. Now, this part is very important. This is almost always what I've been using it for professionally. And it's, it's actually a very powerful um, thing that we can run with startup commands or tasks. So let's continue our reading for role startup order. The following lists the role startup procedure in Azure. The instance is marked as starting and does not receive traffic. All startup tasks are executed according to their task type attribute. The simple tasks are executed synchronously, one at a time. The background and foreground tasks are started asynchronously, parallel to the startup tasks. Then there's a nice little warning here. IS may not be fully configured during the startup task stage in the startup process, so role-specific data may not be available. Startup tasks that require role-specific data should use Microsoft.WindowsAzure.ServiceRuntime.RoleEntryPoint.OnStart. Now, this warning is actually very significant. I've had a couple moments in my job where we had to modify some things inside the IIS configuration. However, the the particular application is not yet um, deployed, so we don't have anything to modify if the cloud service or, or the web role rather is not even deployed yet. So we had to use startup tasks that uh, would wait a certain amount of time so that we could execute those commands that we needed once the actual application is deployed and then you know after the timer expires from the startup command it would it would trigger um, some scripts that would end up uh, configuring the settings that were required in IIS so kind of a long-winded explanation but this this is actually very significant to know and understand and there's just some more information you could read this on your own time I'll have the link um, Let's move on to example of a startup. So they give a very simple example. Uh, essentially, this is all you need right here. This first line, you just need the, oh, actually, no, I lied. These first two lines are all you need. You can choose to have an environment. This is de definitely important um, as you make more complicated uh, startup commands. But you really only need the startup and task commands, right? And then you, can, you don't need to name this startup.command. You can name it whatever you want for your command file. Uh, you do want to state your execution contacts, just like in the earlier video where we had to elevate to have admin privileges to do certain tasks. You want to make sure you do that. And as I stated, you want to choose between simple or uh, what was it? Um, simple or background or foreground tasks. So if you follow this link, they continue to give up some more information. Um, they actually tell you how to make a log file. We will actually end up making this example. And they go on to give you some more helpful information. Um, you definitely want to bookmark this page if you're going to continue to make startup tasks because they give you a lot of helpful information on the kind of settings that you want to have while you make your startup tasks. And they give a even longer example. Uh, this is also important to note. You know, this this gives another example of how you might want to send uh, additional parameters 
to your uh, cloud service as you're making your startup task. So that pretty much concludes it. Again, this will be inside the description as well as the pinned comment. So let's go into the actual programming of this. Okay, so we've returned to Visual Studio so that we can make the startup task. And just like the documentation stated, we want to navigate the service definition.csdef file. So all we're going to do is, you can follow along with that documentation if you have the link open, but all we're going to do is we're going to go beneath, let's go beneath imports, and we'll type in startup, and we'll type task command line equal startup task, or startup command rather. Execution contacts equals equals elevated and task type simple that's all we need so this line is pretty much all we need here and we're going to save that so then we'll move on to creating the actual dot cmd dot command file Okay, so to create the .cmd file, currently in my Visual Studio, I don't have any um, packages or, or tools that allow me to make a .cmd file. I don't know if there is. I'm sure there is, or that there exist tools that you can do it directly through Visual Studio and add a new file, but that's all right. I don't have it, so we'll just go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. You want to click on your web role, you want, or web role project. You want to open folder in File Explorer, and right here we'll just type in new text dot document, and we'll call this startup log dot tx. Nope, startup startup dot cmd. Right. If you change a file name extension, the file might be unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are sure. So now we see it inside our folder right so let's take a look at this real quick in case you're new to this um, you can see that it has the same structure app data app data app start app start content content so on and so forth right so you would just imagine that you'd see startup.command but it's not there so in the event that you're new to um, C Sharp and Visual Studio all you have to do here is you have to right click on the project or web rule one for us add go to add existing item and then go ahead and find your startup.cmd and now you see this little plus icon well this is actually because I'm linked to VSTS as well but anyways um, you see this plus icon so you can open it up and now you could actually start writing here so we're just gonna make a simple uh, message inside of a, a new log file that we're gonna create so to do that you want to type echo and our message is this log file was created from the startup task. And I'll explain this in just a second as to what's going on here. Let's just make it distinct. Okay, so the explanation is going to follow. So here's the explanation as to what we just typed. Um, echo should be self-explanatory, but if it's not, it's essentially just make an output. And if you look over here, it says the regular output is sent to standard out, std out, and the error message is sent to standard error, std err. So essentially what we're doing is right over here, you can print the errors in standard output to a single file by using ampersand one command to redirect output for standard error and standard out and then sending the output from standard out to a file their file whatever right so that's the same thing that we're doing with our code if you take a look at it and again I just want to state that this will this link will also be inside the description and pinned comment and this is also a great chance if you want to pause the video give this a full read without having to go to the link this is the time so we're back inside Visual Studio, and for all intents and purposes, we are finished. 
in terms of the programming. So what we're expecting to happen is that when it's deployed, it'll come to this startup command or task, and it's going to go and look for startup.command, and it's going to run it with uh, admin privileges synchronously. And then inside startup command, it's just going to output this string, this log file was created from startup task, into this newly created file. So we would be able to publish, and we can actually publish it. However, let's build it for a second. Looks like the build passed, right? So you'd be able to publish it. It would build properly and you get the deployment and what's likely going to happen is you're going to log in RDP to confirm that this text file has indeed been created and the startup test ran successfully only to find out that it didn't. And the reason for that is because if you look at startup.command and you look at the properties, let's expand this a little bit, make this smaller we'll see that it says copy to output directory do not copy so what is this saying exactly well let's look into it we'll start by unloading go to your project your web role project unload the project and then right click on it again and click on edit web role onecs project So we can make a later video on this as to what exactly you're looking at if this is your first time. But essentially, this is all the project settings, um, including any files that might need to be included during build process and so on and so forth, as well as, you know, the, the versions of um, dependencies of NuGet packages, any other, you know, dependencies that might exist. So anyways, let's go down and let us search for startup command it does say content include however we need to confirm that this is going to be you see how this over here the setting application insights it says copy to output directory preserve newest we need some kind of setting for that too we need to ensure that the startup command is always going to be a part of the process that's going to be deployed it's always going to be packaged up so how do we do that? Well, let's do it through here first. So let's reload the project. You can be prompted. Yes, I want to close it. We'll go back to startup command, copy to output directory, and we'll change it to copy always, right? So now let's go back here, unload the project. Yes, I want to save that change. We'll go back to edit. Let's find startup.command again. So now we see that it's changed its setting to always copy. And that's good. We need to ensure that it's always going to be copied and packaged up, deployed, so that we can run this command file. So don't forget to go back here once you're done expecting, reload the project, and you're good to go. So for the purpose of this video, I just want to let you know I, I already deleted all the current deployments inside this cloud service. You don't have to do the same. I just did it so it's easier um, to see the difference. But anyways, let's go on and publish it. Okay. And we will publish this. And let's publish it to production. Release is fine. Enable RDP. We have our storage account. Everything looks good. App Insights is disabled. Looks good. Let's deploy it. And as always, just wait for the output to say that it's actually deploying the application. And then we're good to go. Awesome. Looks like deployment was successful. I did forget to make a meaningful deployment label for this, but it's okay. So let's click on the WebRoll instance and let's click on connect. Okay. Connect. And the password was capital R, locus DP, 2018, 2018. 
Yes. So we're inside the cloud service and we will navigate to the C drive. So before we do that, what we're expecting to see is startup log.txt and inside of it, the string that we sent inside that startup.cmd command file. So we go to this PC, C drive, sure enough, we see it. Startup task log, we do see that it has one kilobyte size. So we can only assume that it has the string that we want. This log file was created from startup task. So before we wrap things up here, I just want to note that in earlier videos, I said that there are certain things you can do with a startup task as well as work roles. And while that's technically true, it's very important to understand the difference between the two and why you would choose one implementation over the other. Let's take installing a piece of software, for example. Both startup task and work role can do it. And a work role can also have a startup task. But say, for example, you have a web role with a startup task that needs to install something and a web role with the work role that needs to install something. Both can do and achieve the same goal. However, most likely, if you need to install a piece of software, you need that to be up and available before the actual application comes up online. If you do it with a work role, it will likely be that it's trying to install it once the application has technically been deployed. So you might have some time, uh, some downtime or some, some conflicts in general. But if you do it as a startup command inside a web role, first of all, you don't need the additional work role to do that. And second, it's going to do it before the actual application is even deployed. So it'll be up and running and there'll never be any downtime or any potential conflicts about the piece of software not being installed. So that being said, uh, that pretty much concludes these initial videos that cover web role, work role, and startup tasks. There will still be plenty of videos coming out. There's a lot of content that we can make with Azure. But as of this point, you've got some good footing, good grounding in terms of Azure Cloud Services. So that being said, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if any of this has been helpful to you. I'd appreciate the help back. Until then, take care. Bye.